What's up, patrons? Thanks for supporting me. Very, very kind of you. Let me pause that. And LCV FPV Paul McDonald rightly saying that Letterman was the best late night host, unequivocally greatest of all time. Frank Nicholas, Riot Nine, Jason Crabtree, and Less Obese Quads. What's a good price for a session for Less Obese Quads? Asks. Um, I refuse to pay over a hundred bucks for him. That was actually just session five footage, um, but. The flying from the public stream at that new spot, at that concrete spot, that was all session four footage. What's up, Ruby Tim? Uh, all right. Let's keep going. I got a little more in me here. Let's, uh, let's keep soldering. It's, it's not looking like um, we're going to be able to do the... Uh, uh, all the setup and stuff, which is probably a good thing because I, I'm gonna have to watch uh, Joshua's video on how to do the setup and everything. And I don't necessarily, and it's like 35 minutes long, <laughs> so I don't necessarily want you guys to have to sit through that. So that's fine. Maybe we can just get all the uh, get all the wiring done on this, and then um, yeah, we'll move on from there. Or no, I'll I'll take care of it on my side, the the setup procedure and whatnot. Because, I mean, you guys can't even get a hold of these AM32 ESCs at this point, so what's there's really no reason for you to need to know how to do the setup. And apparently the, um, apparently the, the configurator is a little rough. <laughs> um, but wait, no, 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 but wait, there's more. Uh, we gotta keep getting these motors on here, so let's just, uh, keep our eyes on the prizes. Keep our eyes on the prizes, I guess. There's a really nice little jam here. I wouldn't mind having this jam. I'm actually going to download this really quick. Uh, I wouldn't mind having this just on repeat forever. Download full mix. Ha! All right, cool. Uh, okay, more motor wires. What do you say? And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna this this motor wire kind of sat up a little bit. I'm gonna get it a little flatter on this pad. Oh yeah, it's much better. Okay, just rotate this around a little bit. What the hell was that about? Like I wasn't, I, I thought, I, I mean, I was, that was weird. The wire just like sat up in a strange kind of way. Right at the last second there. I thought I was holding it with the tweezers. No, I was. I was just being weird. Three, come on, don't be a jackass. There we go. What the hell? Where's all the solder going? Like, don't quite get it. That's better. All right, I'm going to need to move this uh, pad a little bit here as well. Or not pad, uh, race wire, LED race wire rather. 
All right, so I'm just gonna lift it up and then screw the motor down, then we'll stick it down. Bow, 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 bow. Uh, what's the front? This is the front. Okay, good. And let's hammer these little shits home. We'll do two more motors and then we'll suffer through the, uh, the annoying part of the ESC for me is always the battery pads. I'm just like kind of figuring out how I'm going to put all three sets of wires on there. It's really not that much work. And 99% of the time, it's just battery leads first and then the smaller ones on top of that. But I always try to like overthink it. Go figure, right? Me overthink something? No, never. First time for everything. Uh, okay, where are the rest of the motors? Pro twos, yeah, right, got it. Get it. I always try to do the first lead not using the tweezers, and it never sits down as flat as I want it to. I don't know why I don't just use the goddamn tweezers from the get-go. Because I usually end up redoing it. And I use the tweezers to redo it. Good song, I like this jam. All right, get down there, little fella. There we go. And last one here. See, like, these are fine. There's plenty of solder on these. Uh, like, sometimes the solder just disappears. These wires are, like, very tinned. There's plenty of... Oh, God. What, really? You're gonna bridge like that? What the fuck? Who told you you could do that? Don't be a dick. What? Now you're not gonna... Cooperate at all? Okay, I'll show you. There we go. Much better. It's perfect. Uh, less obese. Oh, wait, no, we got that. LCV says, show me an explanation of what you consider jello in HD footage, please. I couldn't find uh, the stream you talked about that before, and I've been getting lots of smooth jello free footage. Um, LCV, basically, like, jello is like a waviness. Uh, it's like a vertical waviness, basically. Um, in the. Uh, in the footage itself like and it it also it's it's also like a general sort of blurriness of the footage like because you know each each frame uh so 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second um each frame should be like a, a crisp little picture um and yeah it's kind of hard to get that in most of these micros especially with the with certain cameras. Certain cameras are worse than others. GoPros are really good at not giving you jello filled footage. Uh, the, the thing I'm really interested in is a micro that you can actually crash and then not have jello filled footage. Um, with absolutely brand new fresh props. Uh, you can get jello free footage on, on a lot of micros, but uh, after a crash or two where the props get a little bit bent up or the motors get a little bit bent up, that's when things really go to hell. Um, so that's the real challenge that I'm sort of facing. But uh, in all of the notchy motors that I ran over the years, I was never able to get jello free flight footage, like fully jello free flight, flight footage. I could get some stuff that was like kind of okay, uh, but nothing that like in, and here's the other thing too, jello really pops up in midday sunlight 
So like at sunset, not I mean not nothing, but most cameras won't give you jello at sunset or, or just in low light. Um, it's really like midday sun that's the real challenge in terms of uh, jello, a, a rig that's running smooth enough to not uh, give you a bunch of jellos. Let me actually, um, this, this arm guard is getting awful chewed up here. Let me, let me pop it off and melt it back together. <clears throat> William Loesch says, how should I mount my cam on the glide frame? Accidentally bought a Runcam JB Phoenix. Um, the glide frames come with little TPU loops for the front standoffs. William, I would just use those. Uh, they work really, really well. FPV Trucker says, I'm in the house. Still have glide number two waiting to be built. Off to work uh, for a month to recover from my surgery. Oh, wait, no. Off, off of work for a month. Uh, starting to feel better, better maybe this week. Very cool, man. What's happening here? Is this, uh, what's... Is this screw not gonna come out? Come on out, screw. Uh, I want you to come out, please. Please? Bueller? Come on, come out of there. What are you doing? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, it was stuck under the, uh, it was stuck under the arm guard, I see. Okay. Let's pry this fucker out. All right, I'm gonna have to. Uh, what time is it? Oh no, it's way too early. I was about to say I'm gonna have to go feed the cat in a second, but he's an hour early. You got a ways to go, buddy. Relax, please. Or else I'll attack you physically. I'm a cat attacker, guys. I attack cats. Thus the name cat attacker. All right, so let's get this guy off of here and we'll melt it back together and then we'll, ouch, plop it back on there. Ooh, that's what happened. Okay, this started to delaminate. So let me get in there and let's close that guy up a little bit. Oops, oh, that put carbon fiber dust everywhere. That was kind of gross. Better there. Okay. Alright, Ah, here's the piece of carbon that was being all angry in there. Come on. Piece of carbon. You're like a little splinter hand grenade. Go away. Uh, and here's the other piece. Uh, this guy. I want to melt him back together. Jesus, that really separated. Uh, let me use my little wood-handled bastards. Where are they? So there. Okay, I'm gonna use this just to uh, put a little bit of constant pressure on this. While I play the heat. Listen to this song. This song is great. And I'm also going to add a little bit of TPU here, just to kind of keep this thing closed up. So let's just chop a little bit off here. Okay, let me not do this over the quad. Uh, Jason Crabtree says, you think higher pitch three inch prop could help post crash jello due to the low RPM? You never know. Um, I don't think I've ever thought of that, but I mean, God only knows, man. There, there's so many variables. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, I do have these, oh, oh, oh. That actually reminds me. Good, good thinking, man. I mean, you didn't know you were thinking this, but uh, good random chance, I guess. 
I uh, I prepped a bunch of the uh, the Rotorex 3040s. So I'm gonna run some 3040 propellers on the uh, on the rip squeaks. In addition to those Gemfan 3035s that we were talking about last night. So that's gonna be pretty cool. I'm excited for that. Uh, I'll show you in a second once the uh, flaming TPU is dealt with. So early. I'll give him some treats or something. Oh, that's a good idea. All right, just give this a second to kind of chill out here. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, here's what they look like. Here's what the 3040s look like. These are old school Rotorex props. I don't think, actually, these are 3044s, 3044. So these are pretty pitchy. That's a beat up one. Uh, let me get a fresh one. Let me double check that. Yeah, 3044. Look at these things. Kind of bull nosed, but they do have a little bit of of uh, profile to the to the tip right so yeah these should be interesting there's the nubs that I had to cut off I figured out a way to cut them off pretty flat this new pair of uh, flush cutters that I have are actually a lot better than the old ones um, so yeah these should be interesting I can't wait to see how these are in the uh, on the rip squeaks they're not uh, they're they got a little bit of bend to them. I don't know. They're they're hopefully they're not that fragile. I have a feeling they're gonna be pretty fragile. But um, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I got a bunch. Looking forward to that. I got a whole bunch of the micro 4S batteries charged, so I should be able to do some good uh, some good testing. Finally, uh, this guy looks to be in pretty good shape. Let me just put another little bit of uh, TPU there. Just a little tiny bit more. Oh man, I farted and it reeks. Oh boy. That smells like a fucking dumpster. Uh, BH says, what do you think of Stan FPV's new frame? Looks interesting, LOL. Well, um, I haven't actually seen it. Is it another one of these 360 deals? Um, the 360 thing is a little too gimmicky for me, I think. Um, but it is interesting. You can do some pretty wild shit with it. And like, you know, raise some eyebrows. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool, I guess. If you're into that sort of thing. Uh, let's get this. Melt it in there. There we go. blow it on this to try to get it to cool down a little quicker. Normal 5 inch frame with an interesting TPU mount for the flight controller, oh boy. Uh, Paul McDonald says, do the manufacturers supply STLs for that stuff? It seems like, like they don't, but not sure if I'm missing something. Some of them do, BQE does, uh, but they don't all do that. Usually you can just find something totally acceptable on, on Thingiverse, so usually they don't really need to. Um, if you need something, Paul, let us know. We'll find you something on, on Thingiverse, almost always. There's almost always something totally good on Thingiverse. Uh, it's just a matter of finding it, and for you being new, it's going to be hard to find it, but we can, you know, myself and everybody in chat can probably find you what you need in like three seconds. Uh, William Loesch says, totally mistook the included 3D prints as one of those nano VTX receiver combo mounts. Thanks, my man. First 5-inch main uh, is tomorrow. Much thanks for your guidance. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Uh, BH says, no oh, wait, I got that. Okay, cool. Um, Alright, this should hopefully be cool enough to uh, push back under the arm. And then we can move forward. Here it goes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, perfect. 
Okay, throw these two conicals back in here. And I think we got, what, one more motor to do? Yeah, one more motor to do, and then I can uh, look for excuses to not do the ESC, because I really don't feel like it right now. Um, and we've been going for probably coming up on damn near three hours. Nah, I guess two and a half hours. Just looking for excuses to, uh, to go relax on the couch. <laughs> I almost actually didn't stream tonight. Um, uh, but, uh... I had spent enough time in the in the simulator uh, on uh, the PS4 that I was like, yeah, no, I got to do some actual work. It's hard. Like, I, I I know that I need to take time off, but like, this is such a weird schedule, and like, also it's kind of just like, yeah, oh damn, I have to go hang out with cool people, and. Uh, and build flying toys, you know? But at the same time, like, uh, you know, burnout is a real thing. So it's a, it's a, it's an interesting... Uh, and I did take one day. I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself that I did take a day off this week. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting uh, mix when you uh, work for yourself of, like, it's very easy to feel... Like you're not doing enough, and I, I constantly feel like I'm not doing enough because I think that I'm not doing enough. Like I, I legitimately do think that I'm not doing enough, but I try to just kind of like let my mental health dictate that to some extent. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where like the Patreon thing is really nice because like it's not like like relying on YouTube ad YouTube ad revenue is really tough because like it's just this one-to-one -one, like get your ass on there and make another another edit that's gonna get um, ad revenue whereas like with patreon right it's a monthly subscription like you know you guys are supporting me and you're signing up for the giveaways and you're doing all these things you're there's nothing in patreon that says <clears throat> I'm gonna stream every day right like I, I do and I try to but you know the the Patreon thing is really cool because you're just you're supporting a person. Like if they choose to to take a little bit of time off, the expectation is sort of that like you're gonna stick around, um, and you guys do, and and you guys have, and and that's like really awesome. Um, it's a really cool thing that I like totally stole from Joshua, which is just you know like if your patrons are the main source of your income then all of your reviews, all of your content, everything is pure. And, and you know, it's, it's like you guys saying like, hey, I like what you're doing, keep doing it. And that is an incredibly liberating and like, just, uh, yeah, pure way of entering into this and, and, and doing good shit. And uh, it really helps with shit like burnout. It really helps uh, that, you know, I don't have to be a slave to YouTube and play all the goddamn clickbaity games and shit like that. Um, I can just let YouTube be the platform that I use and not obsess over uh, ad revenue. I mean, Christ, I don't even monetize these videos because the... The, um, I would make like $3 a month by monetizing them. And I would rather you guys not... I would rather make $3 less a month and you guys not have to watch ads. Because that shit's obnoxious. The live streams are interesting that I get uh, a humongous amount of watch hours, but watch hours doesn't drive any amount of, uh, of revenue or anything like that on YouTube. Um, view count does a huge number of views and like a huge number of views doesn't necessarily equate to like good content, you know? 
So, because of the Patreon, I can just focus on making good content rather than... You know, that's what it is. Patre Patreon allows me to focus on making good content rather than making... A, a lot of content, which I do anyway, but um, more so than that, uh, content that gets views. That's what it is. Um, it, it, it decreases the, the reliance on just making shit that people, yeah, that, that people are going to click through on. And that's not always good shit, right? Like, there's a, there's a lot of, like, not-so-sexy... What are you eating? Hey, what did you just eat? Oh, okay. It sounded like plastic. Cool. Um, yeah, you guys know what I mean. Alex Vornick says, what ESCs aren't effective? <laughs> I'm getting burned by AOs now, no luck with a foreign one. Um, everything Akon. What, what ESC do you have there that blew up, Alec? <sighs> these little conicals down and we will be good to go <laughs> Alec you've been you've been going through it man it's um I feel like it comes in waves man it, this is uh yeah th sometimes sometimes you just get a whole bunch of electronics that just don't fucking work I, I, it's it's really frustrating um, but it's not just you man it's uh, all of us we've all been through I mean, like, when when you do multiple builds, like, if you just do one build or maybe two builds, like, you can usually kind of get away with it, but if, um, not always, A, and B, like, yeah, sometimes it just, man, it sucks. It's really frustrating sometimes, but, um, you just, it's just a part of the hobby. It's like, it's one of the worst parts of the hobby, but it is a part of the hobby. Um, and unfortunately, there's just no way around it. You just can't, like... I mean, Acons are really good quality, and they're, they're a little bit more expensive, but, I mean, their, like, value-to-cost ratio is amazing. So it's well worth a couple extra dollars. They, they should be a lot more expensive than they are. But Akon doesn't spend, like, any money on marketing. Um, so that's why they're not more expensive than they are. Th that's why, like, the Hobby Wings tend to be more expensive than the Akons, and they're not as, uh, in my opinion here at least, um, and they're not as durable. Uh, because they're spending money on, on actual marketing so that people actually know about them. Which is really annoying. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm screaming from the rooftops for everybody to buy Akon, and everybody's like, Who, who's Akon? What the hell does that mean? Is that a word? Uh, it's like, yes. It's a company that just makes good stuff instead of focusing on making lots of money. Um, I forget how many little squares this wrap strap needs to be, but I can just hold this one up and figure it out. Okay, so it's right up here. Wait, no, I want to go one farther. There. And there. Oh. <laughs> Binding flies. Uh, Holy Bro, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Holy Bro is one of the, like... Holy Bro, Diatone, uh, iFlight, like, they all make okay stuff, but, like, in my experience, it's it's still just, like, rolling the dice. It's, it's just, they don't make stuff that's good enough where it's, it's, like, you hook it up and it works. Um, that's what I love about Akon. Like, I just don't, I don't think about it. I wire it up. I don't even test it. I just wire it up and go, and it just works every single time. Um... I don't see that often. I don't see that in, in the other manufacturers. Even, um, even, uh, uh, Hobby Wing. Like, they just don't, even though their pilots that they sponsor say 
say that they're completely bulletproof. Um, that has not been my experience. I have five blown up um, of their five of their ESCs that have blown up, and I, I hear it from a lot of people. I hear a lot of people having problems with uh, with their stuff. See, so yeah, I dropped them like a hot potato a while ago. Haven't looked back. of wires. Uh, okay. So, let's pull the motor wires out of the way here. And, well, let's get this thing tinned. Is it double-sided? It is double-sided. So, I would like to put the plug header downwards, I think? Yeah, plenty of room to put that downwards. What about here? Is there anything weird going on with this? No. So we're gonna go plug header downwards, so let me tin this guy up. Plug header downwards. I'm just gonna dump solder into this thing. Sodite! Here we go. My favorite part of any build. Because it's easy and satisfying. You don't have to manage wires, you just freaking basically weld. Not really, but sorta. I wish I'd learned to weld. Obviously it's never too late, but Good welders are uh, in hot demand, especially in the car world. A like really good talent to have, skill to have, and I feel like I'd be really good at it. Come on. solder on there anyway. I have to add some more. Take your screwdriver, take your solder, wrap it around. Oh, screwdriver the other way. Take your solder, wrap it around the handle. All right. And then leave a little bit at the end. It doesn't really matter. But pull it out at the end like that. Take this part, squish it together like that. And now you've got a little self-standing spool of solder. And now you can bring your solder to the tip of your soldering iron down on that to tin the tip, or you can pick it up and add solder with it. Nice little handle. For example, I didn't put enough solder in these two pads, so let's add a little bit. There we go. Any of you guys jump on the uh, Healthy Gamer train with or without mental health shit going on? Anybody digging uh, Dr. K? He's got a really cool new uh, uh, series of videos coming out that's going to be pretty slick. Big project that he's been working on. Should be really interesting. I can't wait to see it. All right, motor pads are all good to go. Now I'm just gonna kind of pour solder into these. I <clears throat> I don't quite know. I, I don't I don't love these little 
crenellated pad thingies here. When I could do an ultra short um, battery lead and actually turn this thing sideways, but then the problem with turning it sideways is the plug header is now sticking out the other side. And I don't like that. I don't want sticks and shit getting in the in the plug header. Um, I guess I could just... Some of this song. I guess I could just run it vertically. Yikes! <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think I have space to run it vertically like this. So I'm just going to do that. That's going to be fine. That makes it kind of annoying to, to solder this up, but let's just pull the band-aid off and do it. Uh, I want that to be facing downwards, so I'm just going to grab this like this, so that's down, and this is up, so i try to figure out how I'm going to do this here. So that's positive, so I'll do the positive first. I think I basically just do that and then, yeah, just load up the tip of the soldering iron and just dump it in there. That'll be fine. Yeah, let me do this though. Let me flatten this pad out a little bit, or flatten this uh, exposed section of wire out so that it fits a little bit better in there. Okay, that should be good. So I'm just gonna load up the tip of the iron and then just drop a big old ball in there. And that should be good to get it started. Uh, I do, Alec. I scored a bunch of the Akon V1 analog flight controllers before they went away. But the, the flight controllers, but like plenty of people make good flight controllers. Um, practically nobody makes a good ESC. So just getting onto Akon ESCs is the biggest thing you can do in terms of reliability in uh, in five inch rigs. This is not working out how I thought. I'm gonna I gotta I have to actually tin this first. I can't just. I was hoping I could get it hot enough for everything to happen at once, but it's just not gonna, and that's fine. So I just need to come in here and add a bunch of solder up in here. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, this is what I wanted to do. That's the stuff. Yeah, there we go, that's better. Okay, now I just wanna make sure the other side is nice and tinned. Oh yeah, the other side's good to go. Might as well do the uh, ground pad while I'm here. Especially because the, the flight controller is now heated up. So this is a really good time. Bunch of solder in there. Make sure the bottom is all nice and covered. Yeah, good to go. Oh, wow, this ESC is boiling hot right now. Let me try to get this knocked out since it's got all this heat in it already. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice. Nice and smooth. And just poke it through a little bit. Okay. Give that a second. And now I am going to come in with the tweezers for the negative. Oh god, I don't want to touch it. I need to touch it. Oh god, oh boy. 
Uh, I am going to need to cut a little bit of this negative bead off. It's just a little too long. Ouch. That hit my chest at Mach 7 million. <laughs> okay, that's going to be good. There we go, just going right back in. Put a little tiny bit of fresh solder on the tip of the iron. But I think there's plenty on here. This should be totally fine. Or not. Go now, it's cooking. There we go. All set. You guys probably couldn't see that at all. My hand was totally in the way. But, this is what it looks like. So, I just got it set there. Simple. Uh, let me take a look at this under a 5x loop just to check it because there are a couple of capacitors kind of close to these pads. Now we're good. Oh wow, it turned out really nice. Good god. Oh my god. I could pull on this with a car and it wouldn't let go. Jeez. Yes, he's still boiling hot. What time is it? 12.10? I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna leave it there. So I can go relax a little bit. Midnight is always a good time to, uh, just kind of chop it. We did another, f I usually like to stream a little bit longer for you patrons. Um, but yeah, it's late. Time to start a welder fund. No, Paul. The last thing I need is another thing to obsess over. Um... Uh, Alec Dvornik says, looks like the Holy Bro flight controller doesn't have the same pinout as the header on the Akon ESC. Yeah, typically not, Alec. Uh, typically when you go from one brand to the other, um, you're going to have to move pins around, which is kind of annoying. Um, was that your problem? Is that was, I don't think that's, that, that didn't sound like your problem. Um, hi, kitten. I'm gonna feed you in 20 minutes, buddy. You gotta wait until the right time, you little jackass. Uh, thanks for hanging out, people. Thanks for supporting me, patrons. You guys are super awesome. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, three o'clock. Uh, we'll do some simming. There's not gonna be a Patreon-specific stream tomorrow, unless I do something tomorrow night, maybe. Um, oh shit, maybe we'll finish this tomorrow night. Maybe not, we'll see. I'll see you guys tomorrow, be good. Here's some, uh, here's the rest of that battery with some uh, some epidemic sounds as usual. Thanks for hanging out, have an awesome night. See you tomorrow at three, Eastern.